All right, hey everybody, how's it going today? So um, today I have another tutorial and uh, it's not really a tutorial, but more just like um, an improvement, upgrade, kind of DIY fix. But I purchased a dial indicator at Harbor Freight like um, a long time ago. And uh, I never really touched it. I, it's one of those things where I just kind of like um, put it, you know, I bought it, threw it in a toolbox, and then just kind of left it alone. And so um, I'm bringing it out. I'm going to be using it for an upcoming video. And so I wanted to just kind of make sure that it was working well and everything like that. And so uh, as I was uh, looking into it, I noticed that if I, you know, use my hand and move the dial it would jump it would like go from you know no matter how hard i tried it would like just skip like that and and it wouldn't be able to do this you know like how it's doing now and so um what i you know i, so I said okay well let, let's open it up and see if we can clean it and so um what I ended up doing was I opened up the back and I'll show you right now. I'll get my screwdriver here and just uh, go ahead and undo the back here. So take off the cap and you'll see that there's, you know, you have like your plunger and then you have your plastic or, you know, nylon guide post for, for this right here. And, and then you'll, you'll see that, um, you know, you'll have like your gearing and then there's some more gears. Um, right in here it's kind of bright I can I see yeah you have some more gears right here and so what I ended up doing was I got I got a paintbrush uh, with some uh, kind of short but firm bristles and then I just used some I used denatured alcohol for this one um, and and I just kind of you know have one of the little pumps like this and uh, what I ended up doing was I just started uh, cleaning all the gears and everything like that. Uh, just, you know, just kind of wiping around in there. The funny thing is I removed this nylon guide and it was actually cracked. Like it, it broke into two pieces and it was already broken, um, surprisingly. Uh, but I was able to fix it with super glue. So it wasn't a big deal. Uh, I almost thought that I was out of a dial gauge, but the super glue worked and I was able to keep the, the dial gauge. So uh, give me one second here. I'm going to kind of adjust this lighting. There we go. And so um, as you can see here, yeah, so I was able to, to save this, this nylon uh, guide post. And so what I ended up doing was I got some machine oil and I used a, um, a like 26 gauge, I don't know if it's going to focus here, but I ended up using a 26 gauge needle and I just um, located, you know, the, the gears where where the gearing is so there's the gear here here and then you kind of have like a, a main gear here and so i i just lubed up those points with like a, a very tiny amount um watchmakers they'll actually they'll actually take a needle and they'll just dip it in like a little thing of oil and just let the needle kind of transfer the oil to where they want the 
oil to go. And so this is pretty much the same just because this needle is so, is so small. So I was able to, to just add, I mean like, like a quarter of a drop from this. So, so very light amount of oil. And uh, I was able to get everything working. So the cool thing is when I took apart this spring right here, uh, before in the very beginning, it, the plunger would just stay where it was at. And then as I was cleaning it with the denatured alcohol, the, the plunger started to actually uh, move just off of the strength of this, this spring right here. So that was cool. I knew I was going in the right direction. And then from there, um, I, you know, I just kind of started letting everything dry and I, I used Kim wipes to soak up the, the excess um, alcohol and then I cleaned the, the plunger post and everything like that. And, you know, I cleaned uh, all of this. And, and then from there, I started to oil everything and I got it working pretty smooth, but it was still, it was still sticking. It was like still jumping, you know, and so I uh, added some more oil, just a hair, and then um, I was tempted to oil the gears uh, right here. I was tempted to oil like uh, the gearing and everything, but I, I didn't because um, I, once again, I didn't want to add too much oil. Uh, you, you know, these things barely take oil as it is uh, or probably not even oil. So. I didn't want to go overboard with the oil and so what I ended up doing was I just kind of worked the oil in, put the post back together and then I um, noticed that it was a little bit better but it was still sticking. So it was good but it was still sticking. So then what I ended up doing was I put um, four drops like uh, you know at your 12 o'clock six o'clock, three and nine. And then I just slowly brought the plunger down to just kind of let the oil, you know, just let the oil just kind of wick its way in. And then after that, I ran, I cycled it a couple times and then I did the same at the top. I, I held it up, put, put four drops of oil and these are tiny drops. I mean, four, four drops is probably equivalent to one drop um, or even less. But I put four drops in and then slowly brought it down and then worked it in like that. And then after that, um, you know, it, it was you couldn't even tell it was on the post. That's how that's how uh, light of a coat it was. And then so from there. I, I tested it out and sure enough, I was able to get it to move almost, you know, increment by increment in thousandths of an inch, uh, just off my, just off like the movement of my, of my thumb here. So as you can see, see that like before it would not do that. It would jump, it would kind of skip, like it would skip. And so I thought it was the gears were bad or something, but it was just that, you know, it was, it just wasn't operating smoothly. And so now I got it to where I can make these fine movements just with my thumb. Um, and the human body, um, it's not, you know, too precise, you know, I mean, like, it's very, very precise. Don't get me wrong. The human body is a very amazing machine, but, um, you know, to be able to, to kind of move in like thousands of an inch, uh, is is kind of tricky, um, you know. So uh, to be able to do this now is awesome. And before I did all this, it already worked smoothly on a vise. Like I tested it on a on a vise in a magnetic holder, and I would slowly, you know, crank the vise, and it would it would you know adjust one thousandth at a time. So I knew that the dial was good, but now that I have it this smooth. Um, I know that it's going to be even better when recording measurements, so I'm, I'm happy about that. So I just kind of wanted to pass on this knowledge 
um, to everybody out there. So if you go to Harbor Freight, and by the way, Harbor Freight's not sponsoring this video or anything like that. I just want to share it. Um, but if you go to Harbor Freight, you can pick these things up for a good price. Uh, a lot of the really high quality dial indicators are, you know, really expensive. And if you're going to just be using a dial indicator for like one, one or two jobs, or if you know, if you're only going to use a dial indicator like once a year, or if you just want like a beater dial indicator and then you can save your really good dial indicators for when you want to use it for like really precise measurements, then, then um, it's better to go with the, a less expensive one. And so to make a less expensive dial indicator even better, this is something that um, you might want to try out. It's something I did and it worked for me and so it might work for you. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the combination is just denatured alcohol to clean it up, clean it up with a paintbrush, and then follow it up with some machine oil um, and let everything, you know, and just kind of work everything in and you'll have a nice uh, smooth operating dial indicator. So uh, that's, that's what I have to share. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and until the next one, I'll see you guys then. Bye.